Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the garage, welcome back to the race truck, UCC truck build. So, this past weekend we had an exciting weekend of testing, so Friday we didn't really do too hot, but we took what we learned there and we got the truck down the track. We ran a best of a 570 in the eighth and coasted to a 904 and a quarter. So exciting but that doesn't mean we can't make this thing faster we still haven't even really turned it up yet and we still have another kit of nitrous we can throw on this thing but another thing we can do to make the truck faster is make it even lighter so that's what we're gonna do this uh, this mod is actually going to benefit us in two ways so what we are doing is we are changing out the brakes on the race truck so we're getting rid of this big heavy caliper and rotor setup in favor of these innovative machining um, hubs, these billet aluminum hubs from Innovative Machining. I actually got these from uh, uh, Ringer Built Garage on, I think it's Ringer Built Garage. I'll put it down in the, uh, I'll put it on the video, but on the Instagram, he hit me up. He had these, already had the bearings and seals pressed in it, and he couldn't use them, so we scooped them up for him. Thank you to him, I appreciate it. Um, but then the rest of the stuff came from fire pump. Well, for the most part. So our new brake rotors, these are our new TBM brake rotors to go with our TBM brake calipers. Now, these, uh, these are real race car stuff right here. So these are lightweight. They're made of billet, um, billet steel, I believe it is. Um, maybe it's titanium. I can't remember. But they're built that way so they don't flex. So some of your cheaper calipers, when you actually apply the force, they will flex. And then you're not getting your brake pad to apply evenly. So we also have our brake pads for the setup. But they will. these billet pieces from TVM will allow you to have a good flat contact patch on the brake rotor. So my friend compared these to four-wheeler brakes because they're so small, but the guys at TBM, um, you know, they know what they're doing. Like I said, real race car stuff. The guys at Firepunk had these on their Pro Street truck. A lot of the guys in the shop have them on their drag builds. So I'm very confident in the setup. So it's not like a, a full out kit that the guys at Firepunk sell. So we are just going through them to get the TBM stuff. So we didn't have to do all the figuring out what would work for our setup. We do have fronts coming as well. Um, the front calipers, I believe, will be here tomorrow. But we're going to work on the rear setup right now. So my original plan was actually to reuse this guy, which on the rear axle here, if we look, comes off the main quarter-inch line to this rubber hose. And then it's down there on the axle, if you guys can see, between our coilover and all. So, yeah. Um, where is it? Yeah, um, right there. So that block right there, we were gonna reuse, but we can't. So the problem is my plan was to come off that rubber hose and then uh, use an adapter and go to a stainless steel brake line to each of our calipers. But the problem is nobody makes an adapter for this fitting. So this, I went to advanced and you know figured it out. It is an M11, one and a half, uh, thread I guess is so M11 one and a half nobody makes an adapter for this block that we can use this block is actually from Moby Dick I went out cut it off so we could figure everything out so needless to say what we are going to do is we are actually going to use the steel brake lines on the truck to these all all-star performance fittings they are uh, brake line adapters so we're gonna go from uh, a 3 6 well it's a 3 8 thread for a 3 16 brake line to a dash 3 fitting on the end and then we have some brake hoses from summit that we got little short stainless guys and they are going to go to the dash 3 fitting on our tbm brake rotor so i got these particular fittings from all-star performance here's the uh, part number and all and i got these uh, mounting brackets off of Amazon and the clips so that way we can kind of go to like a factory style like you would see on the front of the 
uh, front of your brakes and just kind of make everything look nice and make sure it's secure so it will kind of look similar to what's up front here going through and all that so like I said we also have front brakes coming and all that so not 100% sure what all is involved here but we're gonna get started I already have our brake system draining down we're gonna remove our caliper remove our hub and all that and just go forward with figuring out how these innovative machining brake hubs go on and uh, drop a bunch of weight in the process. I'm really excited to see how much weight this is gonna cut out of the truck. Old crummy crap is off of the driver's side of the rear axle. We have our innovative machine aluminum hub and our TBM brake, uh, brake caliper rotor are on with shoes. And I also have our other set on the scale. So I have something down in the comments. Tell me what you think we are saving with this setup. So how much do you think the old setup weighs and how much do you think our weight savings are gonna be? Obviously, I know already I wanted to weigh everything before I got it on the truck and yeah, I'm happy. So I did not put the axle back in yet. I wanted you guys to see this. So when I took this apart, I did not have the right tool. So when you uh, take the bolts off of here and you pull your axle out, your axle will slide right out. Uh, might need something to just kind of pry it to get it started. So that pulls right out. Then you have a snap ring type deal here. And that snap ring actually keeps, there's a key in there. Um, let's see here. So there is actually a key right here that keeps this nut from turning. So what I did was I actually had to go to Advanced Auto Parts and got a spindle nut. So this actually came in a kit that they have right here behind me. Um, it's actually part of their learner tool program. So. Um, borrowed this it costs like hundred five dollars when I take this set back tomorrow I'll get reimbursed my hundred five dollars and I will use the correct tool for the job very convenient especially since they are not too far down the road from me so got the spindle nut and what what I did was I actually got our aluminum hub in like I said if you guys get this innovative kit you'll have to get the bearings pressed in and the seal mine were already done our buddy uh, Chase Ringer took care of that for us but what you're going to do is you're actually going to want to seat that so i pushed it in as far as i can started the spindle nut and then using the spindle nut uh socket actually rotated the brake assembly the opposite way while i torqued it i torqued it to about 50 foot pounds and that was just to set the um, bearings so then i loosened it up and got it to where it was loose where i could just spin it with the uh by hand and then I tighten it back up by hand you know spinning spinning and everything and all and as you can see we are a little bit off of our keyway so what we're going to want to do is actually loosen it a little so that way we can get our key in yeah right right there like that and then now here's our key get our key in there and that'll keep that so the key keeps the spindle nut from coming loose and then the little snap ring will keep the key from from popping out so that's that i just want to show you guys that that's kind of the hardest part of the whole job the rest of it's pretty simple um i mean it definitely looks the part that's for sure got our brake pads in and all that so we'll slap our axle back in over here we'll have to do our brake lines but we're not going to do that right now we'll hop over to the driver or passenger side pull all the old crap off on that and uh 
yeah, we'll be well on our way. And the best part about this is this is almost all rotating weight. I mean, this whole hub assembly, everything, it's almost all rotating weight. It's it's a beautiful weight savings right here. So, all right, let's get this wrapped up and hop over to the pasture side. All right, passenger side is done. We have our innovative machining solutions hub, our TBM brake caliper, brake shoe, and our brake pads are installed, all that kind of good stuff. Man, these things even just look awesome. I mean, beautiful. So anyhow, uh, we're gonna do our lines now. Like I said, the plan is to take our factory lines and reroute them, and then we have our little stainless lines we're gonna put on there. So we'll just have to make a couple flares, straighten some tubing, try and make it look nicey-nice. And uh, yeah, that'll be job done. And once our front brakes get here, which tomorrow our calipers are supposed to be here for up front, we can get those in and get the whole system bled. And yeah, we'll try and spool her up, make sure we're not pushing through brakes. But uh, yeah, definitely uh, well worth the effort. And this is actually pretty easy. Um, on this side, the seal, the inner seal, actually stuck on i was trying to pull the whole thing at once i ended up pulling the caliper off and then pulling a the drum and all that so but other than that i mean just take this flange off unthread that nut you know go borrow a tool from autozone or advance or whatever pull the whole hub assembly off put the new one on you know torque it down and loosen it back up and yeah very very simple to do so Last night, uh, we were working on our brake setup, uh, the TBM brakes that we got from Firepunk and our IMS setup that we got from uh, Chase Ringer. Got that all in, everything's good there, but we had to run our lines. So, interesting thing about this big line coming from the jun junction block, it actually has a 3 16 um, flare fitting already on it, so I was able to actually do that last night. I'm very happy with how we ran that, uh, just right up and over the axle. Uh, probably put a couple clamps on it at some point. Not a big concern right now, it's not going anywhere. But also our little brackets, welded those on there, and we have our little junction fitting to our stainless um, hose. So that all worked out. We didn't have to flare, reflare that or anything. Worked out perfect. On the driver's side of the truck here, we kind of did the same thing. The only difference is that fitting was different. So I had to wait till today and get a fitting at advance. Just a normal flare fitting, 3 16 uh, flare fitting. So got that and basically I cut this brake line off as close to the end where the hose started as possible. And that gave us pretty much a perfect length for our little 10 inch stainless line down to our TBM brake. So our brake setup in the rear is done and all we need to really do is bleed that. But we're gonna try and get our front brakes installed first, which will be the upcoming video, but there's a big story with that. Let's just say that um, we have certain things going on up here, certain thing on the uh, snowmobile trailer that we need, but you guys are gonna have to tune in the next video to see that. So. 
We got our rear brakes done. All they really need is bled. We're gonna get to working on the front brakes in the next video and get that all done, or hopefully get it done, because I would like to have them on for Rudy's, because there's some other stuff I wanna try and do for Rudy's, just so we can try and go down there. As prepared as possible, truck kind of like how it's gonna be at UCC, and that way we can kind of use Rudy's as a big testing session with a bunch of people with way more knowledge than I have, and who can look at our stuff. You know, they might look at how our four link is, or our shock adjustments, or our tire pressures, whatever, and they'll be able to say, hey, you know, you should probably do this, this, and this. You know, just their experience will help. Um, so we can, you know, kind of use that knowledge base to help us rather than kind of shooting in the dark like we are now. So rear brakes done. So in the beginning or middle of the video, I asked you guys to guess how much everything weighed. And uh, now that I think of it, I can't remember what is it. I think the front or the uh, rear setup on either side was like 82 pounds. And our new brake setup is 22 pounds per side. It's something like that. I have video of it, so you'll see that now. Anyhow, so we ended up cutting another 120 pounds out of the truck by going to this new brake setup. So I am thrilled about that. It's another 120 pounds off the truck, and most of it is rotating weight, which is phenomenal. Um, I forget what it is. There's a stat or whatever, like... So like every pound of this is worth like seven pounds or something like the frame. I mean, don't quote me on that, but it's something like that. That getting rid of that rotating weight is just a really big plus for us. So we're not only losing 120 pounds, but we're losing majority of that being rotating weight. So it should make the truck even faster. You know, well, lighter is faster, but just anyway. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of all over the place because we got some front end stuff we got to get into, which you guys will see in the next video. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys liked the rear brake setup. Let me know what you guys think about it down in the comments. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get to the front end because we got uh, quite a bit of work to do. So like I said, hope you enjoyed. Please like the video, subscribe down below. Catch you guys on the next one. Get out in your garage, get the wrench on your truck.